So I talked to a lot of people throughout this process and compliance was one of the reasons, the top reasons that people said that they didn't do text message marketing. And it's not that there's necessarily a lot of compliance, it's just that there's a lot of gray area. Um, and compliance is different depending on how you acquire a lead. So I'll, I'll give you guys just a, a, a brief overview of compliance, but I'll, I'll preface it by saying this. If you're going to get into SMS marketing and you're doing it because you want to just make money and you're going to be a scammer and you ruin text message marketing for me, I will find Liam Neeson, I will hunt you down and I will kill you. So don't ruin it for me. Do it the right way. I'm going to give you the rules so that you can't screw it up. Acronyms are everywhere in the marketing world today. B2B means business to business, CPC means cost per click, KPI means key performance indicators, SEO means search engine optimization. Most likely, you knew all of those. Today, we're going to have a new acronym, SMS. Hopefully, this will become one of your favorites because it ties in so well into your Genius Network theme this year of health, wealth, and elf. It hits the last two words on the target wealth and elf. Uh, and honestly, you'll see all kinds of applications. SMS is the acronym for Simple Messaging System. This is going to be the theme of this interview that I'm going to do for you guys and gals. Get set to hear lots of amazing, creative, and innovative ideas that can help put even more money into your pocket and help you reach even more people with your message and your products and services. The British have a queen, and if SMS was to have a queen, her name would be Amanda Dobson. Amanda is a super smart digital marketer. She's helped some brands go from zero to the top of the industries, top of their industries, and specializes in SMS messaging, push notification, uh, chatbots, Facebook groups, and many other channels. She leads a rock star team that creates strategies, breakthroughs, and drives millions of dollars of sales on a monthly basis. She's going to teach us today how to create new traffic channels and make a lot more money using the simple messaging system. I have a series of questions to ask Amanda, and then we're going to open it up for uh, a short bit for Q&A. And to wrap it up after your questions, I'm going to ask Amanda to give us a few closing comments. So now, as in our tradition of Genius Network events, when we have a super special guest speaker, let's welcome Amanda Dobson with Throw Her Money and Applause. Okay. I'm okay with the throwing money. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> so what's cool is me and Amanda have become friends over the, la the last few months. Uh, we've known each other, uh, but we never really spent time wasn't talking. wasn't important enough. It was, yeah, yeah, well, there's that, but you know. <laughs> Uh, it, we, we did an amazing podcast that went up last week on I Love Marketing with Dean Jackson. So I know from uh, just the time I spent with her, what she does, uh, like this could give you all a capability that would change the way that you do marketing, the way that you interact with your clients, and she totally knows her stuff. So uh, there's some questions I have on this little card thing here. Uh, but we can go anywhere we want to go with this. And I, the, the big question is, how did you get how did you get started in in marketing, so that people have that context? And then we'll go into this SMS stuff. Okay. Um, so I actually studied law before I got into marketing. Um, I worked uh, with Fidelity Financial in their secured lending division, um, and then I moved over to another law firm where I was practicing statutory accident benefits. And I actually ran into a scenario where I had someone actually. Um, use one of the lawyers that I was working with used my errors and emissions insurance and was filing um, paperwork with FISCO, which is the Financial Securities Commission of Ontario. I'm Canadian. Um, so, you know, for me, I just saw this like underbelly of the world, of the whole legal community that I didn't want to be a part of. Um, and I had uh, just had two kids at the time. I've got two little girls uh, and I wanted a quieter life. So I took a low level paying job at a health supplement company back where I grew up. You know, I totally just gave up on that whole co corporate world. And it just happened to be by chance, um, I was working as an assistant. And at the time my boss said like, hey, will you just, I wanna learn to write sales copies. So will you just photocopy some of this stuff for me? And as I'm sitting there flipping through the papers, um, I'm just like, this is hilarious. I absolutely love this. And it ended up being Gary Halbert's sales letters. So I read everything Gary Halbert ever wrote. And then I moved on to John Carlton. And then I moved on to like, everything I could get my hands on possibly. Um, and I got my start into marketing literally by doing that. I started digging into the company's marketing. And I was like, hey, why don't we test this headline and do this, 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 and this. And I started writing all of our emails. Um, and I went from being um, the customer service rep to being an assistant to being their director of marketing in seven or eight months. Um, and then from there, I met uh, Roland Frazier, Perry Belcher, and Ryan Dice, and I was their director of marketing for three years. So I got a six-figure marketing education just by th being thrown into it. Um, so marketing was never in my life plan. It was never you know, something I ever imagined myself doing it, but I found something that just immediately connected with me, and it made me so happy, and it ended up making me a lot of money in the end. 
Um, if I had known that before the student <laughs> debt, <laughs> that would have been great. But uh, you know, it was totally accidental. But I think I ended up exactly where I'm supposed to be. Yeah, no, totally. Because now you just absolutely you're and you, and you're not even 30 years old yet, so you're you're, you're killing it. <laughs> um, so how did you come across uh, text messaging SMS? Uh, is Roland in the room? Okay. Where's Roland? <laughs> So um, while I was working for Perry, Roland, and Ryan, on August 24th of 2017, uh, while Perry was on vacation in the Maldives, he was unhappy with uh, you know, how our email program was working. And he, you know, we had 7 million people on our email list, and we were only mailing a portion of them because they were the actives and all this stuff. So on, while on vacation, while he's nice and unreachable, with very crappy Wi-Fi, you know, he decided to send this broadcast email out to everyone on our subscriber list. So for all of you who have an email list, you're going to know what happened. All of our domains got blacklisted. I could no longer send email. And for an email list of the 7 million size, like you can imagine the revenue we were pulling out of that. And if you've ever had a domain blacklisted, there's no end in sight. Like that's, like it's the process to get it back is totally out of your hands. So we were losing revenue day after day after day because of this stupid mistake. So at the time, and this was totally illegal, so don't, don't do it, um, I, I exported all of our customers' phone numbers and I started texting them. And uh, the first day I sent a text message, I think I sent it to about 4,000 people, and within two hours I'm texting Perry going like, holy shit, like we've, already, like we've already blown our email performance out of the water with this. So I just started digging into it more and more and more. Um, and I think we're going to cover like some of the you know results that I've gotten with SMS in a little bit, but that was totally how I fell into this, and this is what I built my career on. I I understood immediately that our businesses in this world can no longer be that dependent on a single <coughs> sales channel. Uh, you know, when was the last time Hotmail decided to not inbox you? When was the last time Google changed their policies and changed the way that your email actually gets, whether it goes into promotions or all of this other stuff? So digging into SMS and uh, you know the other seven channels that I specialize, that's my whole job is to make sure that you guys have an insurance policy for your business so your revenue is never more than 20% dependent on a single channel. So by diversifying, you're basically bulletproofing your business. So that's, you know, SMS was the key to that. So why now? Uh, because this is, well, I'm, I'm asking this more for everyone else than myself. Uh, <laughs> I, frankly, was using voice broadcast as a way to deliver directly to people's phones, and then there's years laws that time. were... What's that? So you're just ahead of your time. Yeah, well, I would like to think so, or at least tell <laughs> myself that. But, it, you know, I make a lot of money in relationships and connections doing manual marketing, which is, you know, sending things off to people, audios, videos, and things like text. I cannot tell you how many people... I have got to start, you know, just sending audio messages to people because of the, the, the deliverable. When I have, you know, I, I can prove that through SMS, even if I'm going to send a message to people via email or call them or whatever, the quickest way I can get a response and the highest level of response is through doing that. So all you're talking about is leveraging it on a much bigger scale. We're going to go through legalities. I want to go through compliance. I want to let everyone, I want people here to do it right. I want people here to do it ethically. I want people to not be, you know, viewed in any way, shape, or form like a scummy, annoying marketer. Yeah, right? if you do it scammy and then you link this back to me, remember I studied law first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so why, why now? Uh, because there's, I mean, you know, obviously the answer is hardly anyone's doing this. So yeah. this gives everyone here a competitive uh, and, and, frankly, an unfair advantage if you understand it. Yeah, and I think um, text message marketing is going to be a game changer for all of us in 2019. This is, you know, I, I said this in the beginning of last year, and I said, you know, 2019, 2020 is going to be the shift um, in marketing, and there's a reason for that, which I'll get to in a second. Um, but con marketing as a whole now is moving more towards conversation. It's no longer, let me just broadcast my message out there and hope it works. We're moving to more conversational, direct response. You know, we're getting back to doing business with people. People don't do business with businesses, they do business with people. So, you know, understanding how to get your message to a person. Well, the first thing you have to do is go to where they are. And I don't know if you guys recognize this, but on average, we check our phones 85 times a day or every 17 minutes, if you average that out across 24 hours. It's where we are, it's where we communicate, it's how we hear from our friends, it's how we hear from our family. Um, so, you know, moving towards conversation and moving towards, um, you know, meeting people where they're at, text message marketing is kind of at the forefront. And it used to be the case that people did research about products and services on their mobile devices, but then moved over to desktop because they trusted a desktop device more than a mobile device. 
But for in 2018, the holiday season um, of the end of last year, for the very first time, mobile purchases outranked desktop 51 to 49. So we're now seeing a shift where people are starting to trust mobile devices, whether that be Apple Pay, Google Pay, um, Amazon has been a huge factor in that. You know, you log into your Amazon account and it's all secure and you can order whatever you want. We've totally made a shift between making purchases on, on desktop versus mobile, which is why right now is the best time to get into text message marketing because people aren't scared to get your message on that device and actually follow through and complete a purchase on the device. There's no friction points, there's no disjointedness from going from one device to another. It's totally seamless. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So how did you know that SMS was going to be a key ingredient in business. I mean, so what was your, well, other than the success you had with it out of this accidental yeah, this sort of situation? This unfortunate Yeah, and, and the reason I say this is because you're the only person that I know that's actually put together a full-blown training and a course on this, which she sells. And, uh, you know, uh, even though we don't pitch here, you should all buy it. Um, <laughs> yeah, so. Um, so for me, um, when I'm looking at the results, I don't just look at how much money this brings in. I look at how much value am I adding to their lives? How much, you know, how can I make things easier for them? How can I get my ideas out to the people who need them when they need them? Um, but just from a strictly results perspective, when I look at my email list and the health of my email list, what I, the metrics that I look at is my earnings per subscriber. So when I send out an email to all, everyone on my list, for every person that subscribed, not person that um, opens it or clicks it, just the people that are subscribed that I'm sending it to, how much do I earn per email? And for me, that was about 30 cents was around there, um, which was great. Um, and I ran my Q4 stats and I compared it to text message marketing and text message marketing was $2.14 average earnings per subscriber <coughs> per send. So for me, I understood that my mm. average order values were higher, um, my conversion rates were higher. Pardon? Seven times higher. Yeah, six times, yeah. Yeah, it was six times higher. And the, uh, the earnings per click for every person that actually got the message and clicked on it was three to five times higher versus email. Now, I'm never going to be the person that tells you that email marketing is dead or that you should stop doing email. And the reason for that is um, when I run an email list, I run, you know, I have 15, 15 million or more people on email lists that I manage. Um, and you can, I email twice a day every day. I email content and a promotion every single day, and I don't notice a difference in my unsubscribe rates. Text message marketing, if you go two or, th two or three is kind of where you want to cap out. You can't send people text message every day. You just can't because your performance will start to go down and your unsubscribe rates will go a lot down really quickly with SMS marketing because it's so direct. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really important when you're setting up a campaign to keep that kind of stuff in mind. But as far as performance um, and adding value, uh, like things, for example, I work a lot, one of my biggest clients is in the financial space. So for us, a big value add to our product sales is, hey, like when you, when you buy this product, we'll give you live stock updates or option, like when something changes or we have a recommendation, we'll send it to you in real time versus text message or via text message. So I'm not looking to just make money with text message marketing. It's a really great side effect of it. Um, but I also want to use this to add value to people and make their lives better and easier. Um, I have another client that's in the health and fitness space. And you know, a big part of their um, revenue comes from selling things like recipe books or you know things like that. And when we were doing some research, we realized that the audience, for the most part, did their grocery shopping on Sundays. So Sunday morning, we're sending out a text message, being like, "Hey guys, here's the recipes for the week, and by the way, here's a grocery list while you're at the grocery store." So by doing that, we're setting up programs that are sustainable, but also giving value and making them want to stay. Like, don't ever set up a marketing or SMS marketing program where you're just planning on blasting them with stuff because it's not going to give you any benefit. But if you're giving them a reason to anticipate and actually want your content, you're going to be better off in the end. But just those results for me and just the, the need to diversify where my sales were coming from was absolutely like the moment I decided, like, this is how I'm going to spend my time. I'm going to just drill and be the best at this. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this video and I want to let you know that I have a new book that's come out and if you'd like to get it absolutely free, there's a link below in the description or you can wait till the end of this video or you can simply go to joesfreebook.com and you can get a copy there. Well, you know, I actually, well, I want to come to how to bond with people and any suggestions you have on messaging and, and, and how to just nurture a relationship. Uh, We'll, we'll do that after I ask you some, like how you've incorporated this into your uh, agency. Okay. So one of the big parts of my business is obviously the agency side where I handle this for multiple clients 
from building their SMS list to actually managing it, monetizing it, and providing content. But one of the smartest things that I did in that agency and what I do for the majority of my clients is I'll take an asset like an email list, and my agency is called Seven Level Profits. Um, and I'll take their email list and I'll roll the people onto an SMS list and then I'll try and build a messenger bot list and then a Facebook group. So essentially by the end of this, I've got seven different communication channels outside of email that I can contact these people on. So if email ever goes down or a messenger, uh, you know, the messenger bot rules are about to change in June where you won't be able to broadcast message anymore without actually paying for it. You know, I'm diversifying my business to protect all of my clients from that. Um, so SMS being so high performing was how I, you know, really started my agency. All of the other stuff was kind of a byproduct, um, but just being able to do cart abandon stuff, where you know on, on info products I'm recovering 20% of average carts for my clients using just SMS. You know, for me, doing that alone justified my value. But incorporating all of those other channels together just creates stability and easy scale. Yeah, awesome. So how does someone build a list of text message numbers? So let's, I mean, people are going to think, okay, so I've got clients, but how do you build it in the same way you would build an email list? Cool. So I'm a pretty tactical person. I don't like, get, I don't like talking about like top level strategy. I like talking about like tactics that you guys can actually walk away with. Mm -hmm. um, so there's two types of ways that you can acquire an SMS lead. One is a keyword, and I'm sure you guys have seen this before, where you text a specific word to a, to a phone number or to a short code, which I'll get to in a little bit. Um, and then the other is a web form. So a web form is very similar. Um, who here has, you guys mostly have websites where you sell products online, right? I think that's the majority of. Well, no, no, actually, I would say, uh, I was, if even if it's 50%, that'd be uh, interesting. To ask the question again, and let's just ask how many people to raise their hand. So how many people in this room actually sell products online where you have like an online order form? So starting to build an SMS marketing list using a web form is as simple as this, is adding a checkbox onto your order form. And if you do the wording correctly, which I cover in the course, and I'll, I'd be happy to share with you a couple of examples. I think I talk about this on the podcast as well. If you do the wording right correctly by adding that checkbox that basically says like, hey, I want to get messages from you, um, you can actually start to acquire all of your buyers onto an SMS list without hurting your cart conversions. And that was something I spent a lot of time because I don't want to hurt my sales mm -hmm. by trying to gain this additional um, sales channel. But it's a really great way. You're doing it anyway, so you might as well you know, just add the freaking checkbox. Um, you can do this really great um, if you've got, does anyone in here have a Facebook page or a Facebook group? Raise hands. So you can actually just put a Facebook cover photo with a contest with a keyword. Um, so Survival Life, for the longest time, was one of my biggest clients. You can't advertise weapons on Facebook, but they can't do anything about an interest category on a page or a group. So I had did regularly did knife giveaways on our Facebook cover photos, and it's just organic traffic to me. But to monetize that on the back end with SMS was a game changer for us. Uh, we ended up go we took our blog from zero to eighty thousand dollars a month on Survival Life just by adding an SMS opt-in at the top of the page. Um, like so, under the logo on the um, blog, there's just a little checkbox where you can opt in with SMS. It's still there right now if you want to look at it. Um, but you know, looking at these existing traffic sources and basically saying like, how can I get just another piece of contact information? Um, I, I love how you, you kind of you just say that thing. It's like, yeah, we just added this and a little checkbox, and we had we went from zero to eighty thousand a month. <laughs> and then we're, then we're off to the next. It's like, that's a... It's, a, it's, a, yeah, it's, it's, it's really big impact stuff. Um, but I just want to but like preface this by saying, when you're adding a checkbox or when, when you're adding SMS consent to anything, you can't assume that email and like, so let me just put my thought together. On a form, when someone's submitting their phone number to you, you can't just have them put their email phone number in a button where they submit because that's not technically giving you permission. They have to give you, you have to give them the option to subscribe to just email, just SMS, or both. So that, that's the point of the checkbox. So if they don't check that checkbox, it's not technically consent. You have to give them the option to separate that. Um, so that's just like a little tip that I learned the hard way. Um, but Did you go to prison? Is that the hard way? Was that what you mean? You know what? I don't think I would fare well in prison. Uh, so no, I, I avoided that one. But yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I talked to the experts on this. I'm really lucky to be friends with some of the you know top performing the CEOs of top performing SMS platforms. So yeah. you know when I was going through the course, I was like, hey, can you guys just like go through this and tell me if anything's wrong? Like, what am I doing wrong? So we just perfected it and kind of made it so that it was more like. Um, you know, I, I knew what was coming down the pipeline for SMS right. marketing, so I made it to kind of suit that. 
Um, but you know, in the podcast as well, I could go for like five hours on how you can actually implement and get uh, SMS names. But listen to the podcast that Joe posted because I go pretty in depth on yeah. um, different placements for opt-ins and you know different messages you can send out to your email list to get um, SMS leads. Yeah, and I, I literally just posted that episode of a couple days ago on the uh, Genius Network. Um, you know, member site. It, you, know, you can find it just by typing in Amanda Dobson, Joe Polish, you know, Dean Jackson, whatever. It'll, Dean it'll Jackson pop up. brought a little bit of value. He yeah, did. We carried yeah. it, but he, is, he was the pretty face. That's true. The, yeah, the, that, yeah it's, it's a good way to describe <laughs> it. Uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the thing we were talking about, even like nine word emails and the way that you engage with someone on a nine word email is also a way you can, you can, you can do the same things and in many cases get better results by doing it through SMS than if you're doing it through other channels too. So it's a great way to take your already, you know, existing marketing and make it This tested. is very much this is very much bolt on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Bolt on, yeah. I'm working on a cool product right now that actually is called the seven word sales letter. So the seven word the sales seven letter. Seven word sales letter. You had to beat the it's it's like seven minute abs. Now you gotta yeah. do six minute abs, <laughs> yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's great. That's great. So let's talk about compliance then because that's uh, important to me and I'm I also am very much about not being not using marketing um, methods to uh, be a jerk and to get yourself in legal trouble. Yeah. Well, we're in a room of jerks, so we kind of got to be careful. Exactly. That's why I want to really bring, yeah, that's why I want to go deep there. So I talked to a lot of people throughout this process, and compliance was one of the reasons, the top reasons that people said that they didn't do text message marketing. And it's not that there's necessarily a lot of compliance, it's just that there's a lot of gray area. Um, and compliance is different depending on how you acquire a lead. So I'll, I'll give you guys just a, a, a brief overview of compliance, but I'll, I'll preface it by saying this. If you're going to get into SMS marketing and you're doing it because you want to just make money and you're going to be a scammer and you ruin text message marketing for me, I will find Liam Neeson, I will hunt you down and I will kill you. So don't ruin it for me. <laughs> Do it the right way. I'm going to give you the rules so that you can't screw it up. Um, there are two types of compliance rules that you really need to know. The first is for a, um, a keyword opt-in. Now, a keyword opt-in does not perform as well as someone submitting their phone number on a field on the internet for you, but it has better retention. And I'll explain that in just a second. So when someone sends in a text message to your phone number, they're subscribed to your list immediately. Now, um, carriers really like that type of opt-in for a couple of reasons. And the number one reason is that you're initiating the contact, so the liability for them is really, really low. And the alternative can be pretty freaky. Um, so they really like that kind of opt-in. So you need to send them a couple pieces of information. I think I remember off the top of my head, but if not, it's in the podcast. So you need to send them your business name or the program name. What are they subscribing to? You need to um, tell them how many times a month you're going to be messaging them. You need to tell them frequency. So um, I recommend 14 messages a month as being your frequency because I like to send two text messages a month and then give myself a little bit of playroom in case I want to test um, to test something. You mean At, two, two a week? Pardon? Two a week, yeah. Two a week. Yeah, and um, I say two a week because I find um, I like to mix in content with my promotion. So what I'll do is I'll send a piece of content on the Tuesday that outlines a problem, and then I'll send them the promotion on Thursday that solves the solution or the problem that I outlined for them earlier on in the week. Um, but you have to get, it's like an email list. You have to give them a mix of promo and content, or they're just going to unsubscribe if you're just blasting them with stuff. Um, so you need to give them the program name. You need to tell them um, how many messages they're, you're going to be sending them a month. You need to give them the links to your terms and conditions, and then you need to give them um, instructions on how, how they can opt out. So just unsubscribe at any time. Um, and that's kind of the compliance that you send just at once if they opt in with a keyword. Um, and the flip side of that, the other compliance piece is the web form. So imagine Joe and I are dating and we have a really bad breakup. So I take Joe's phone number and I go to every scammy website there is and I subscribe his phone number to every text message service that I can find. I can find some really shady stuff out there. That's a good say. idea. I too. can subscribe you to. Yeah, I just, I just yeah. ruined a lot of relationships. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the phone carriers didn't like that. So they want you to confirm the subscription. So they want to make sure that the person on the other end of the phone is the person who actually wanted to be subscribed to that. So when someone enters their phone number to be compliant, there's no compliance police out there that are going to get you in trouble for this, but there are regulatory bodies that are watching. Um, so you're not going to go to jail or anything, but Jiffy Lube, I think, was charged like $40,000 per offense for not doing this um, for everyone that complained in a class action lawsuit. So the stakes can be pretty high. 
Um, but there will eventually, they're working on tightening up on this stuff, so just do it right from the beginning. Um, so when someone texts you from a web, or enters their phone number into a web form, they have to confirm the subscription. So your first message to them needs to be, um, you know, it's you know, so-and-so from blank company. Um, confirm your subscription before, below by just replying with a Y. You cannot message them anything else at all until they reply with the Y. Once they reply with the Y, they're technically subscribed to your list. And then you just send them the same message you would have sent with the keyword that has the frequency, links to terms and conditions, unsubscribe information in that message. And then it's free game. You can text them all day, every day if you want to. I don't recommend it. But you know that's the minimum requirements for compliance. Um, and if you're going to go above and beyond and you're not going to follow the compliance rules, it's like everything else crazy attracts crazy. <laughs> so you're going to have annoying subscribers and you're going to have you know, just not a sustainable business if you don't follow the compliance stuff. It sounds like a pain, but it actually, you know, it ends up working better for you in the end because the people that are on your list are there with intention. They want to be there. They've, yeah. they've confirmed it. So like what I said earlier, the keyword has better retention because the web form has to go through that additional step of getting that confirmation um, for the subscription. Um, so that's kind of the overview of compliance. Well, and I honestly, I, I've, I've always thought that just doing good relationship marketing and bonding and delivering something that people want that's helpful, that's useful, that's insightful, that's engaging, uh, does not come across as someone constantly trying to pitch them something. And if you're just pitching people, you can, you know, which, uh, like the reason people get annoyed by telemarketers as an example, and, and the whole industry, uh, which isn't a bad thing. It's not a bad industry. It's just the way it's been used is most people receive calls that are someone just, it's not like they're calling up to be like super helpful. And by the way, we happen to, you know, it's, it's been, you know, consumers now view it as offensive, annoying people and you can if treat their lives, any, you're invasive. Exactly. So it's, it's any marketing method could get to that point depending on, on the use, the use of it. So, um, I probably should have talked to you about this beforehand because Genius Network members uh, are really capable uh, of, of <coughs> buying stuff, using stuff, implementing stuff. Uh, I never had this conversation with you uh, related to platforms, like what kind of platforms are out there, um, who do you recommend, who do you use and that, that we could go to here. Okay. And, and, and the reason I said I should have talked to you about it is uh, maybe you can introduce me to some of these companies or just set it up so that everyone here can get a uh, discount or something yeah. and I, I, can can, I can get affiliate fees for it. Uh, yeah. well, damn it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can actually already do that. So we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit after yeah. so you can share it into the group. But I can get you guys access to some free credits and definitely discounted services. And I guess I could give you the... Oh, no. And here's the thing, too. <laughs> like, like and Let me say this, too. Because uh, I, I don't... Uh, if, if we actually do something like this, I don't even know if you do affiliate. I didn't... I should have talked to you about this, too. Like, on any sort of thing, I would like to set it up. I don't want a penny from anyone here. I'll give the money to the to Genius Recovery well, Foundation. I was going to say, we've I'll talked about this before where, you yeah. know, um, anything, any affiliate stuff goes directly to yeah. the, the foundation. Not yeah, I want to do us. that with all that. I don't want I don't want this to be like, oh, let me pitch people here on something so that yeah. I can make additional. I mean, they all pay me 25 grand. I'm grateful yeah. for all of you as clients. So anything that will enable them, Absolutely. if we can, yeah. So who do you recommend? Yeah. Um, so first of all, there's there's a lot of things you need to consider when you're choosing an SMS platform, and it depends a lot on your intention for your SMS program. Um, so if you know what you want it to be when you start out, it's a lot easier to choose a platform. So right now there's three types of platforms. Um, one of them isn't quite up and running yet, but will be very shortly. So the first is a 10-digit toll-free number, and this is really easy to get started with. So this would be a company like call or sorry, Sales Message or Scipio, and Scipio. Um, was actually the text message platform that I got started with. It's $199 a month and you get unlimited text messaging. It's got a 5,000 person contact limit, but if you're savvy like me, you just add 5,000 and then delete them and then add 5,000 and delete them. <laughs> I'm savvy. Um, so you know, th those types of platforms are really great. They don't quite have the same deliverability as the second type, which I'll cover in a second, but if you're just getting started in text message marketing, it's a cheap, really good, effective way. It allows you to have two-way conversations. So if someone replies to you, you can reply back to them and have a conversation. Say the name again. Um, Scipio, Scipio is one of them. Yeah, Ra that's Randy Garn. Randy Garn, and, you know, who's we like can... one of the best humans in the world. Yeah, I love super Randy. nice guy. Um, and then the other one is Sales Message, which is owned by um, Chris Brisson, who's also uh, an awesome guy. He helped me a lot with the course, mm -hmm. a lot. 
Um, so those two are really great platforms, and you can immediately get started with those. So essentially, you sign up for a platform, you choose your 10-digit phone number, and you, you're off to the races. Um, the other type of platform is a short code platform. So have you ever gotten a text message from like a five or six digit number and just be like, what the heck is this? That's a short code. So essentially you apply for a short code and those short codes are run through all of the phone carriers and they're pre-approved to do broadcast messaging. So you get better deliverability. The text messages actually fire faster and get to your consumers better because with a 10 digit phone number, it can take up to three seconds per message to send. <laughs> I uh, was sending a webinar reminder for a client when I was like first starting out and I didn't realize that they had such a big list and like people were getting the message like seven hours later, so it was like two o'clock in the morning. I got some really angry replies. Wow. Um, so on 10 digit phone numbers, just keep that in mind. It takes a little bit um, of time for those um, text messages to actually leave the system. Um, but with the short code, you get really good deliverability. They're pre-approved by the carriers for broadcast messaging. The cons are that you can't do two-way messaging, um, especially if you've got a shared short code. There's a shared short code and it's and then you can also do a dedicated short code. So a dedicated short code is something you rent or buy um, on a monthly basis to actually maintain that number. Um, and then people are only getting text messages from you. Uh, most platforms have sh uh, shared short codes. So I could be sending text messages from the short code. Joe could be sending text messages from the short code. Um, it's not the most ideal situation, but you get really good deliverability. It's cheap and you can do it at scale. And most of these platforms, whether it be a 10 digit, sh um, uh, um, toll-free number or a short code, you can automate this stuff. So it's the same as email. You can automate drip campaigns or broadcast stuff. Um, you know, you can do a lot of stuff with both of those. And then recently, because there's limited inventory of the short codes and they were running into so many issues with the shared short codes because some people were spamming them and then deliverability was dropping. So what's coming down the pipeline now is 10-digit long codes. So it's going to be a 10-digit phone number that's dedicated to you, but has all the benefits of a short code. Mm. So that's kind of like something that I included um, when I put the course together that's not really rolled out yet, but it will be. So now you guys know that, so you're, like, you're gonna be ahead of the game, because they're actually gonna be eliminating short codes eventually altogether and moving to the 10-digit long codes. Yeah. And you know, I, I, I know from it, just my own experience t of how things are delivered to me, the, the emphasis I place on receiving things directly texted to me versus emailed or any other format is infinitely greater. And I and when we send things, to, when I send things, it just it's more effectively. I mean, I think this is the highest ROI in terms of touching base that that many of you could even well, do. Well, on average, it takes someone 48 hours to open and react to an email. With text message marketing, you you open and reply to something within six minutes, generally speaking. So six minutes is the response time. So for those of you who have an email list, if you do a lot of like subject line testing, I actually test my subject lines via text message instead of email. Mm -hmm. So I basically use the, the subject line with a call to action and I'll test it on text message list because in an hour I can have way more data than I would on like testing via email. Yeah. Um, and before I forget, I didn't mention um, any of the short code companies that I've used before. So a couple that I'll recommend is Call Loop is a is a good one. Slick Text is another one. SMS Edge is another one. Um, and then yeah, those are those are the, the three main ones. That I'm using yeah. Right now. And, and by the way, what I'll, what I'll do let if we could um, get we'll we'll send everyone a follow up with links to all of these things. And, and then, it's on the podcast episode page too. I, there's some suggested ones there as well. Yeah, exactly. And so if there's anything that you can connect us up with with these, uh, I mean, I'd love to even have whatever, be it trials or something for people Absolutely. to test this. Uh, Eunice or Chrissy, could one of you guys grab me one of my marketing books, and then we'll do uh, we'll do some Q and A here for a few minutes. Uh, I, I want to. You know, show an example because I've been doing this for years. I mean, I started. This is why I fangirled Joe for years. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you. So, you know, this is a free recorded message. And when I was a carpet cleaner, I was using free recorded messages because the internet didn't exist. And so my my thinking was, how can you say more without having to pay for more space? Because I look at all forms of advertising as real estate, if you're going to pay for a newspaper ad, if you're going to pay for a Valpat coupon, a yellow page ad, which are <laughs> offline vehicles that, you know, TV, radio, whatever, uh, or you're going to have a website as an example, or social media, you know, where, wherever you're going to put a message, it's real estate. And so the copy that you use, what you say. So I learned that you could literally say more 
without having to pay for more space. That's when I started teaching you know, service businesses you know, how to use free recorded messages and get little in-column ads versus half-page phone book ads because that, you know, I mean, one of my very first clients was a guy named Don DeLue. Um, okay. Back in 1992, 1993, he, uh, he, was, he still has his company, Healthy Home uh, Carpet Care, and he was running half-page phone book ads, and I sold him a script to a 24-hour free recorded message for $250, even though I paid a copywriter $1,800 to write my first consumer guide. Then I paid the copywriter another $250 to turn my consumer guide into a free recorded message script. And I took him from a half-page phone book ad uh, in the Denver phone book down to an ad smaller than a, a, you know, a business card, an in-com ad that said, warning, don't call any carpet cleaner until you listen to this free recorded message. Call anytime, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Learn seven questions. Ask a carpet cleaner before you invite him into your home and how to avoid four carpet cleaning ripoffs. And off that $250 a month ad, so I charge him $250 for the script. The ad ended up costing him $250 a month. He quadrupled the response he was getting compared to a half page you know, name rank serial number ad, which is what everyone pretty much ran. Uh, and he brought in $62,000 in revenue uh, in a year. And that's when I decided I got to package this stuff up and sell it to other carpet cleaners. It's like the ROI is there. Yeah, yeah. It's huge. Now, that was using a, and what's funny is it works so well that um, throughout, in the late 90s, every major city in the United States had one or multiple versions of my free recorded message ads running in chiropractors, like real estate. I think I've seen it a million yeah, times Everywhere. <laughs> yeah, so I had literally millions of consumers listen to free recorded messages that I would teach these businesses uh, to, to, to use because I'd license my stuff to home remodelers, heating, air conditioning, printing, painting, floors, jewelers, <coughs> hair and nail salons, pest control, all, the, all these different industries. But what, what dawned on me is that the, the phone is such an important thing. And so today, so like I even have carpet cleaners that I get them to put free recorded messages on their vans because no one's going to pop out a computer and go to a website while they're driving, but they have their phone. And they'll call. Now, here's how this SMS ties in, because I know I'm talking about some old, old school stuff. So bring it to modern day. So here's, um, you know, I was using free recorded messages. When, so the, the way I would sell carpet cleaners is I would run ads in industry trade magazines and, they, and, and it would say, you know, how to, uh, how to double your business in six months or less, how to get a flood of new customers, you know, the money's not in carpet cleaning, it's in marketing, carpet cleaning services, and that discovery changed my life, and I had a direct response ad with copy, and then at the very end, the call to action was call to request this free report, because no one wants to call and request a free sales letter, they want to call and request a free report. Now, the free reports were educational, but they would pitch. They had something I was selling, which is a course. And I would, they would call in and they would listen to a free recorded message. And then they would leave their name and, and physical address because there was no email. When I first started, there was no internet. I, I had my first website in 1996, but I started doing this stuff in 1992. And so what would happen is I would literally sell them using free recorded messages. And once they became clients of mine, I would teach them how to do the same thing. And what would happen is, well, I don't know if this would work for my clients. Uh, and then I would say, you bought this thing using this. <laughs> you, you are a recipient and a user of this method of marketing. So once I would say that, they're like, oh, it, for some, it was like some epiphany where it's like, oh, I bought this way, so obviously people buy this way, right? So I started putting free recorded messages even on the course. When I would send them the course, so I would use the free recorded message to capture the lead. I would send the free report. They would buy the course. Then when the course arrived, I had a free recorded message, and it, and they would, and it said, you know, warning, before you open up this package, call and listen to this message from me. And they'd say, hi, this is Joe Polish. What you're holding in, the hand, in your hands is the most powerful course ever created for building and growing your carpet cleaning business. This is also a marketing technique that I'm going to teach you in the course on how to actually, so I would literally enroll them into this thing. So I started putting stickers on, you know, pat, on physical sort of things. You, you need to stop that. That's so hurtful. Jeez. Hurtful of you to do that, Tony. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the pre-release copy of this book. You know, this book was written two years ago, but I'm, again, people are like, what century are you going to release this book? Uh, I've been working on a very big campaign. That's the reason I haven't released it yet, which will, you know, hopefully be huge. So I have warning, reading this book will change your business. Call now to hear an important free recorded message from Joe at you know, 1-800. Now, the beauty of this, when this comes out, this message will 
describe to them what they're going the value they're going to get in this book. I will also have augmented reality built in. If there was an app called Live Portrait, you pointed here, it would actually start playing a video of my bio just because of this picture. So every chapter in the book, once it comes out, uh, and it will probably be published by Hay House because uh, they want to publish the book and uh, give me controls to do whatever, or this crazy campaign I want to do with it. But every chapter will have videos and stuff. But the thing is, right from the cover of the book, even if it's a, in the electronic version of it, I will capture their phone number. And I will put them into an SMS system, which Amanda doesn't know to what degree I'm going to lean on her to help me design this whole thing. But it's going to be, yeah, so, so the book becomes a seed. And so all of the things that you are putting out physically from business cards or whatever are an opportunity for you to capture and start engaging with people and training them how to use it. And if you are in the business that actually helps your clients, if they have clients that educate other people, if you're coaches, if you're authors, if you're in financial services, you actually can make you texting them for, you can frame it and actually deliver it as a value add to, to, to being... You should uh, always deliver that one. Right, right. The, what, the, the point I'm trying to make is, like, don't view this conversation with Amanda as just another way to pitch people. View it as a way to deepen the engagement with people because once I had... You, you'll get everyone's phone number. If they call and listen to a free recorded message, you can say, oh, and by the way, if you'd like to receive... You know the three-a-week emails that I send out? How many of you read those? Yeah. Those are literally going to be built into an SMS. Would you like to get these via text? Because I know a lot of people, how many of you would actually like that, to receive those via text, right? It'd be kind of cool. But the thing is, it would, it would be a great, and a lot of you that aren't reading them, I can guarantee you if I started sending them to you three times a week via text and you opted in to do this, you would actually read them at a much deeper level. And so the point is, you're already using content. I mean, every one of you is putting information out into the world. You're doing it already. So this is another channel and another form of engagement. So mm -hmm. uh, let's do some Q&A. Is there any tips or anything that we should talk about before we go into this? Because uh, uh, Yeah, so I can give you guys, uh, I know monetization is going to be a big part of this for a lot of you. So just a couple of things that I've learned um, over time. So what, what I've learned is the first and third Thursdays of the month generally are paydays for the U.S. Um, so that's when I sell high ticket stuff is the first and third Thursdays of the month. And then the second and fourth Thursday the, of the month are, are generally lower dollar ticket stuff for this. Um, and I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but when I'm sending um, content, because you do need to send content, use your content to pre-frame your offer. Um, you know, highlight the problem and then give them the solution later on. Um, send time is also really important to remember for text message marketing, especially if you're going across time zones, which the majority of you will be. Um, before and after work are really great times. Um, Saturdays are also really great times. Who in here has a Facebook group? <coughs> Any of you guys have a private Facebook group? So if you go into your private Facebook group, you can actually go into um, Member Insights, and it'll tell you what days of the week and what times of the day people are most active in the Facebook group. And knowing that the majority of users on Facebook are, are, uh, are a large portion mobile, um, that tells you what days of the week and what times of the day to actually send text messages, because they have their phone in the hand, their hand and they're, you know, they're interacting. So, and, and if you've ever done email send time optimization, leverage the information you already have to launch this successfully from the beginning. Um, so those are just a couple of things that I've kind of picked up over time. I know we cover a lot of this in the podcast as well, but uh, yeah. those are those will put you uh, at the front of the pack. Great. Okay, so let's do some questions. Jim. You mentioned Don. I remember the day I was there when he cut your ponytail off. Yeah. Remember yeah. that? Yeah, he, yeah, the guy that it was my first client that I sold that to, we also in uh, 2000 or whenever that was, uh, we uh, auctioned off, we sold tickets, raffle tickets for $25 a pop uh, and whoever got pulled would actually be able to cut my ponytail off and so we auctioned off the right to cut off my ponytail and we sold $5,250 worth of raffle tickets at one of my seminars because uh, they really wanted to chop off my ponytail mm -hmm. and uh, we gave the money to leuke leukemia and lymphoma and uh, the very first guy, Don DeLue, would, also was the guy that they pulled the ticket and I had thousands of, of clients at that point but we had I don't know a few hundred people at that seminar but it was hysterical and weird and that's how it ended up being him yeah it was yeah Anyway, uh, that had nothing to do with it. Yeah, I would have tried to sell the ponytail back to you just for nostalgia. You can keep this. You want? we you know what? <laughs> uh, just sorry, I'll take thirty more seconds to waste your time with this story. Uh, yeah, it was supposed to go to Locks of Love, but we found it a few years later in an envelope, uh, That's a and we creepy. still have the ponytail. Yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. But now with you know 
there, maybe in the future the hair things will that will regenerate another one of me and the that just the sounds world like someone was trying to frame you for a crime. Yeah. You sprinkle your hair around a crime scene. That's actually <laughs> tells you what kind of I person I am. <laughs> I should probably get rid of that ponytail. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyone who hasn't, I highly recommend the podcast that Amanda just did with these guys on I Love Marketing. It's really great. More yeah. of the same, but some other tips that are really valuable. The 10-digit long code, is that going to allow two-way communication or not? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because the reason that can't do it now is if you message back to a shared short code, it doesn't know where to send the message because it's coming from lots of places. But with the 10-digit long code, it's dedicated to you. So when people reply, it, you'll get the replies. Um, when you talk about best time to send out text messages, and you mentioned you know Thursdays and paydays and Saturdays and stuff like that, um, does is that dependent on whether your business is B two B or B two C? Because I found yeah. real differences between Absolutely. weekends and stuff like that. Any uh, for B two B, any different take um, on it or B two B? I would avoid Mondays and Fridays. Fridays are I don't know if for you guys, but Fridays for me are always weird sales days because I feel like people are already like mentally checked out mm -hmm. of their business. And Mondays, people are dealing with the backlog from the weekend. So, like, I would look between like the Tuesday and Thursday stretch for B two B, and then B two C. Uh, I gave you my tips before. Yeah, shockingly, we found a really good open and response rate Sunday night, and it might just be yeah. my tribe, but I'm wondering if I, I that's that's email, that's not text. So I was yeah. just wondering if you did anything like that. Text. Yeah, I, I I'm not a religious person, and I like when I was first starting out with text message marketing, I sent a text on the Sunday morning not thinking about it, and it was like, my phone went off in church, what were you thinking? And I was just like, oh God. Um, but Sunday nights are great, um, depending on the messaging. Yeah. But Sunday, when you're looking at, when you're setting this kind of campaign where it's you know a device that's in someone's hands, you've gotta take their lifestyle into consideration. Mm -hmm. So Sundays mm -hmm. are very much leisure time. Mm -hmm. You know, People are like wanting to distract themselves from the fact that Monday is coming. Um, so depending on the type of content that you're sending, you'd probably get a pretty good response on Sun. I just avoid Sundays because, like, to me, like Sundays, people's like, let's not think about life days. Got it. And I'm yeah. not always looking at this from like a monetary perspective. Um, but yes, yeah, I, I would imagine Sundays would be, you know, pretty good depending on your market. Super. Wait till things. certain uh, certain uh, religious groups start exploiting this as a fundraising opportunity. Oh, I can't Sunday. wait. Yeah. I, sometimes I like just worry about the demon I'm just releasing on the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's get a mic. Like, right? All right, good catch. So I kind of have two questions. Um, does it really depend on the product you're trying to sell and whether SMS is a good platform? And um, Not necessarily, because I think you can pretty much sell anything through conversation. And when I first got into text message marketing, I assumed that this wouldn't work for high ticket offers. Um, and I actually had a client who sells an $8,000 coaching program, and she had been running this offer for so long, and it just kind of stopped working via email. So we tested it via text message. Um, and I think the first time she sent it, she made like, I think it was like $30, $38,000 selling, or $40,000 the first time she sold it via text message, and this was a dead offer. She wasn't making any money with it at all. Um, so it definitely works for high ticket as well as low dollar offers, but do you have, like, can you give me some like more context? Because this works for products and services, it works for retail, it works for physical goods, it works for coaching. Well, so most of my clients are B2B. Mm -hmm. I work with universities and <coughs> hospitals and things like that, so they don't necessarily have cell phones. Mm -hmm. It's the office line. So I don't know how I would even apply that or if it's even applicable to something I sell. In something like that, you'd probably want to go with something more like a like ringless voicemail or um, like a, something like that Joe talked about a little bit earlier because they may not have a cell phone, but they're going to have a work phone line. Um, okay. But yeah, in that, in that scenario, text message marketing may not be quite as effective. Well, and then, here's what I would say, though. You So mm -hmm. you, uh, most of your world is print, right? Mm -hmm. You physically, so... Keyword. If like mm -hmm. I licensed my my course years ago to the printing industry, and so there's a guy who sold 1,200 copies of a, a rewritten version of my carpet cleaning course for printers, and so I was doing carpet cleaning audits, and he mm -hmm. started doing printing audits, and what one of the things we realized is that people that want to hire a printer now back in the day, this is a much different world today. Uh, you know, all businesses were getting letterhead and flyers and brochures and business cards and stuff. And a lot of them, they didn't like that sort of business because it's one-offs and it's not a lot of margins right. and they're, you know, personally, you know, it's like a lot of service. Um, but I said, start charging printers to go in and do a printing audit. Well, you'll charge them a fee and you'll evaluate everything that they're spending money on with printing. 
and give them advice on how different ways that they can reformat, different ways they can get stuff done. Why are they getting it printed? People don't want to print shit. They want the results of what they're getting printed. Exactly. They want more business, right. right? So I would say go in and be a provider of advice and, and, and then tell them how to get the best stuff they need in the right way, get it printed properly, teach them things, educate them, charge them 250 bucks, 500,000 mm bucks. -hmm. Uh, you come up with a consulting fee, and then if they end up doing business with you, they can apply that towards any printing order that they have, and it would switch the positioning so that they're no longer a, a salesperson trying to sell them printing, but you're an advisor trying to help them think through what they're getting stuff printed for in the first place. And so the term we would use is, as a printer, you are printing money legally. Because if any problem in the world can be solved with the right sales letter, if you're printing something for somebody that's actually going to make them money, you're printing money Correct. legally, right? So start using, like, so what you said earlier, people don't do business with a company, they do a business with a human, an individual that happens to work <laughs> in a company. So every one of the people that is ultimately uh, part of the pipeline that's interacting with you doing business, they all have cell phones. And these are people that you can engage with. So I would print on the stuff that you put out for your own company ways that they can listen to free recorded messages, ways they can opt in and get text messages, but do value added things that will help them because a lot of them would rather engage with you that way. And there are ways to capture, you know, phone numbers from everybody if you hit them with the right offer. Okay. And yeah. on average, I, I, I think I read the stats on Slick Text or one of the sites. I credit it um, in the um, in the course. But 44% of people would rather do business um, with a with a company that they can text or um, do a, like messenger bot, like someone they don't have to talk to directly. Right. Uh, and I think we're more and more moving in that because like I don't know about you, but like I hate dealing with support or anything like that. I would rather like deal with it via text message because I. I don't like confrontation, and like if I have a problem, like if we ever get in an argument, I would never call you to argue. I would text you. I right. can text fire, yeah. but I could never say it. Um, but I think people are more. You would test a fist at a poop, at a poop a, a motorcycle. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Maybe yeah. some flames. Exactly. You know? yeah. 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 But we're more and more moving that way, where we don't want to deal with confrontation, and that was actually part of the ways that I grew our SMS list. Um, so if. Uh, you messaged into our support. I would text. Uh, you would get an email back that said like, "Hey, someone's working on your request. They'll get back to you in 24 to 48 hours. But if you want an immediate response, just text us, and we'll have someone text back immediately." And we moved like I think it ended up being like 62 percent of all of our support <laughs> over to text message. Well, I mean, you t you take Nick Janicki's company True Rest where, with the float pods, right? So I was I went and floated yesterday, and then I spent a little bit of time talking with Nick afterwards because uh, he happened to be down at, at the Tempe location, and um, so their scheduling is done through text. So if I wanted to schedule, I sent a text message saying what appointments are available, and this was yesterday in the the, the morning. Uh, I was like, man, I could really float today. I have a Genius Network meeting the, the next day. It's you know, so I I sent a text, and then the text came back two thirty, seven thirty, or eight thirty, and I'm like, I'll take the two thirty appointment all through text, and it's you know, it's like, and it's not even a real human. Yeah. It's kind of like a sort of an AI system, uh, but I'll tell you, like this is where, and it's and if you guys want to see a slick system, go and and as a Genius Network, you'll have to enter your credit card just in order to get in the system and open up with, with Truest, but as a Genius Network member, everyone here can, in Tempe can float for free. If you want to just do a free float, I work that out with them, right? So if you want to sit in a float pod, but just to see the service and be like, oh my God, because a lot of people be like, I want to do this in my own company, yeah. but it's text messaging. And so yeah. it's, test, it's, it's well, SMS marketing. Even if you do, um, if anyone in here does webinars, webinar show ups are like 40% higher if you send text message reminders versus email reminders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th think about it. You do a great post on Facebook and you would like people to read it. I just posted something great on my Facebook page. Uh, you, you have a podcast. I just released my new podcast. You know, listen to it here. You know, I mean, whatever, whatever you're doing. I just started texting, uh, testing something really funny, actually. So I noticed for one of my clients, they had a webinar where the drop off was really steep. So instead of just accepting the drop off, like we didn't have the resources at the time to refilm the whole thing. So instead, what I started doing was texting real time updates. It's like, hey guys, if you missed this, Joe just revealed his top 10 secrets to doing this, this, and this. Here's the link if you want to jump back on the webinar. So we are actually seeing the webinar rates go like this because people were jumping off and then coming back on, jumping off and then coming back on. That's um, great. But there's a lot of other applications. Like 
I do a lot of list rentals with my email list and sometimes I have a list rental that does terrible and it affects my deliverability for my email program for the rest of the week. So to fix that, I'll send a text saying, hey guys, I just sent you a really important email, go check it right now or whatever the value prop is, but go check your email right now and I get a spike of opens, which, affects my, which impacts positively my email deliverability for the rest of the week. So you can really start to look at SMS and all of these other sales channels that I mentioned before as leveraging one to benefit the other. It really becomes a domino effect. I love it. Uh, we'll do a couple more questions, and then we'll, we'll have. Uh, and by the way, we're gonna we're, we're we're gonna do dinner for everyone here at uh, six o'clock. Okay, so if you if you need to run the restroom, just go to the restroom and be, do quietly because we'll, I'm not gonna take a break. We're gonna wrap we'll wrap up at five o'clock. So I think, um, and then you guys will have time to network, and we'll have a great dinner tonight with everyone. But I do want to spend a, a few more minutes doing some Q and A. Yeah. I don't. Ha I don't have a question, but I want to share something that we do, and this is really pertinent to those of you who, in your business, your customer has to wait on you. We have an auto repair business, and people will drop their vehicle off in the morning, and we have a shuttle that will give them a ride back home or to work, and then the rest of the day they're wondering what's going on with their car. Is the estimate ready? What's wrong with their car? Uh, has the technician received the parts yet? Is their car ready yet? And so as they're going through the process, as their vehicle is going through the process, we'll send them a text message update. And what this has done, what it does, is it reduces the number of times the customer calls us and interrupts our customer service representatives or our service advisors just to answer the question, what's the status of my vehicle? It reduces the client frustration and it reduces the number of phone calls that we get that are not marketing phone calls, that are just the, the client wondering what's going on. So it's something that can really help to give better customer service That's for fantastic. one and just by giving a simple text message. That's really fantastic. And for those of you guys selling physical products, you can absolutely automate um, product delivery notifications as well. So it's like, hey, your product's going to be, or your shipment's going to be delivered today. Here's the tracking number if you want to watch it. People love that stuff. Yeah. Um, let's give Tony a mic. And before I forget, I want to, I want you to actually tell people how to get your course and whatever sort of special thing you want to do. Could you share the process you used to develop your course? What did you do? Who, who helped you? How did you decide to do that? I didn't really decide to do it. I just had so many people ask me about it that I was just kind of like, all right. Like, I'm just going to put all the information together. No, honestly, <laughs> she was speaking about it and teaching people. Cause he I, was actually the one that was like, okay, seriously. Yeah, no, I saw, she literally, so uh, Alona and Amber, um, many of you know, uh, rented my space because we have rented this room to Genius Network members to use it to do courses. And so they were doing a training here and Amanda was, you know, speaking at it, and like I, I, you know, I've watched her and I've listened to her, and she just, I'm like, wow, she just really knows her stuff. So in, in a lot of ways, you just, you just identified that, first off, people don't know how to, they don't know what you know. You uh, can make money doing this. I mean, this is a great opportunity. Package this stuff up and train people how to do it, and that's, you know, I mean, part part of it is when a lot of people are you know that they will give you money for training, it's a lot easier to have a motivation to put together a course than just say, hey, let's put together a course. It was actually, my, this was the first time I've ever, I've done this for tons of clients. Yeah, I've you know, sold millions of dollars of courses, but I've never created my own before. So for me, this was totally like, it is so much different when you do it for yourself, like to you guys, because like I didn't realize, like even writing copy as myself, like to sell the course was so weird because I'm so used to writing as somebody else. So when I wrote it as me, it was like the most surreal experience. Yeah. But what I did is I actually took on a couple of clients to do just text message marketing. And I actually created the course as I went through the steps of setting up their SMS program so that I could actually like create the SOPs and all that kind of stuff. And in the course, like you get copy and pasted like text message campaigns so you don't have to write them. I wrote them for you. Um, you know, you get a lot of stuff that kind of just makes the process a lot easier. And I just put it together as I was going through it myself. I just used my own SOPs and the information that I had. And then I called in Randy and Chris um, and a couple of other SMS platforms and had them go through it, put their staff through it, promote it to their list to make sure that the information that I was putting out was the best. 
and that the you know the concepts were going to work across every business, not just my business. Um, and you know they kind of went through that and they shared with me the policies that were coming down the pipe because there was a lot of things I don't have the access to the carriers that they do. Um, so they you know they were like this is what's going to happen like with the ten digit long code I would have never known that otherwise. Um, so they came in they critiqued it for me um, and then they wanted to take part in you know sponsoring it by giving free access to the platforms and stuff through the course. Um, so it was, it was a really fun process, and I learned a lot in the process, and you know, I unintentionally got quite a few clients <laughs> from it. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me ask you this then, because usually the, the opposite of is you sell the benefits of the course and what it will do for someone, not the, you know, uh, when, when, they're, when, they're, when you're selling travel, you don't sell the travel, you sell the destination, right? Because no one wants to hear about the labor pains of hopping on airplanes and lines and shitty food and all the pain in the ass stuff and missed flights, you sell the destination. Uh, however, uh, I'm going to do the opposite of that. What are the features, not the benefits, but the features? Like, how much, what is the time commitment that someone will have to, for, first off, what do you sell it for? Then, then, uh, then what's the time commitment that, so, that everyone here that wants to take this on realistically, uh, either themselves or for a team member? Because a lot of people here would rather just give a course to a team member yeah. and have them learn stuff, although I think you don't delegate. And I built it knowing that was the case. Yeah. So, so what, 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 what is the realistic sort of effort that someone's going to have to put into this in order to install this capability into their company? Yeah. So I sell the course for uh, five hundred. I think four ninety seven. Um, the course I think is, is only three or four hours long. It's pretty. It's pretty condensed. Um, and I included a lot of stuff in it. Um, I don't just cover text message marketing in it. It's obviously like the main factor of it. But and by the way, when she said like because. Uh, you just released this. You just completed this thing. So yeah. this is like Brian. This is yeah. So yeah, I haven't actually like even done a full scale launch of this yeah. this yet. Um, yeah. So um, you know, as and, and I pr I appreciate your feedback on it as well. So if you do go through it and you feel yeah, like I'm you waiting feel, to go you, through it. If I mean, you feel, yeah. if you feel like there's something missing, let me know. Um, but I built this for people like me who are you know excited by the results of their hard work. Like for me, I'm that, that refresh that button refresher. Yeah. Like I don't mind going through the work as long as I'm like immediately gratified by the results. So I built the course knowing that. So it's really easy to go through. It's pretty easy to implement. It's more the strategy and the psychology behind when and how and what to say in the text messages that's the most important part of the course because the tech implementation really isn't that hard. With systems like Zapier and stuff like that, it's not that hard to integrate um, SMS marketing into your business. It's just knowing how, what, and why um, that really is important in the course. But knowing that we're busy and we have a lot of stuff on our plate, and I can't tell you how many clients I've had that's like, we've been meaning to do this for years, but we just didn't have the time. I included things like um, checklists and um, the copy and paste <coughs> campaign so that you can hand this off to someone else, and there's, there's virtually no way to screw it up. Like, it's totally QC proof. This is everything you need to do. Um, but knowing that you're sending... Um, an offer from an, a mobile device, it only makes sense to have a mobile optimized offer. So I, uh, the course also covers mobile optimization and things like how to minimize uh, page <laughs> load time and some of the little more technical stuff that you'd want to hand off to someone on your tech team or something like that. But mobile optimization for me outside of text message marketing has been the biggest mo needle mover for me in all of my businesses, my clients' businesses, bar none. So the mobile optimization part of the course is probably one of the most valuable sections in it and something everyone can benefit from. Um, and that was something that I did like during the course creation process. I actually went through all of my clients' sites and did video walkthroughs of all of their sites being like, ouch, like we should be doing this, 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 and this. So I created the mobile optimization checklist, which is in the course, so it shows you what to be looking for, when to be looking for it, and what to do about it. So those are the kinds of things that kind of come with the course that aren't directly related to text message marketing, but will give you a better result in the end. Yeah, it's funny, you know, I sit and think about, like, Tony's question. I mean, uh, even though I've been putting together courses since, you know, I mean, 1994, uh, you know, I, I don't really often think about it, it being difficult to put together a course, although, like, every course I've ever put together has been difficult. <laughs> but I, when, right, it's like the first time in years I've ever thought, like, wow, that's probably, like, a really big obstacle, because if you sit and think <laughs> about a course, and of course he's a CPA, so that says a lot, right? No. But, the, but the thing is, yeah, it's, pro it's probably, like, seems like a dis insurmountable, difficult sort of yeah. thing to do. And in this approach is actually interesting. Yeah. It was terrifying, let me tell you. What you're doing when you're servicing clients, because you actually have to think about it made me think about you all the steps. You actually have to think about what you're doing and why you're doing it. All of us know what we do and why we do it, when we do it. But sometimes, 12 hours later, 
we don't exactly remember that as so doing it the way you did it is very smart and it's very approachable. Yeah. And you know, look, I w like there's two ways to actually think about course creation too. Uh, you know, one thing I've often told people is to go to like uh, the draw shop and get a, a whiteboard video. And some people hate whiteboard videos, right? Whatever. Uh, what I've told people though is like if you go through the process of creating one, it's it's similar to Dimitri hiring Dimitri to take you through their uh, what's it called? The the thing I just went through. Yeah, essence, well, essence extraction, expression, and execution. Yeah, so what? Like our process, basically web design. Grab a mic too. Uh, so, so, but, but the getting Patrick on the phone with me, having him do my origin story. Mm -hmm. What ends up happening is when you're cre going to create something, you have to go through the thinking. Like one of the yeah. biggest jobs that a great copywriter has to do that they never get really any acknowledgement and respect for, is people are expecting them to write a sales letter or just produce some sort of webinar or some sort of campaign, that's, what, that's the deliverable that you're gonna get, but they have to do a lot of research. In order for you to do write copy or design and marketing, but you have to learn about all this stuff. And so what doing course creation allows you to do is learn about you and learn about your clients. And so whenever you, like when you wrote your book on SEO, I mean, it's not just what you have in terms of a big book, that you, it's what it does for you. I mean, in the, in the fastest way to accelerate your learning is to teach it to other people. I mean, there's a big reason I do Genius Network. I mean, think about this as a business, right? I bring very smart people together. I charge a fee for it. It's not a cheap fee, it's a high fee. It attracts players with money. Uh, it's positioned in a certain way. Uh, I basically crowdsource knowledge and have other, you know, what are 10 minute talks? It's not me up here teaching the stuff. I'm, I'm back here learning because I'm curating and I'm bringing some of the smartest people together and doing something that collectively they won't go and self-organize on their own. So if someone tried to organize the people that are in Genius Network on their own, it would cost them way more time, effort, and money than $25,000 a year. So it's a value from that level for people that appreciate it, but it's also an incredible thing for the enhancement of my own knowledge. And if I have to literally teach something or facilitate something, think of what that does to my education. I mean, I'm sitting here bringing Amanda here because I have not yet gone through her course. I have not yet launched this. This forces me into doing what she's talking about at a much deeper level because now that I've made this like this thing, if I don't start doing this in my own company, I'm gonna look like a hypocrite. It, but the fact is, I know, I'm, I'm doing it to a little degree. I mean, the, the biggest aha was in 2012 when I First, the first time we ever actually let people come to like Genius Network meetings that were not Genius Network members when I started doing the annual events. The first one I actually did was in 2010 with, uh, in, in, in LA. It was just Genius Network members. Then we did it in 2011 and I have Paul Zane Pilzer and a couple of other people in New York. And then 2012, I'm like, let's offer this to, it was just literally like 15 or 20 people that paid 10 grand. We didn't market it, it was like word of mouth. Well, you're not in Genius Network, but if you wanna to come to this thing, 10 grand. And I sent a text to my buddy Jim Warman, who I've known since literally right out of high school. And I said, hey, I'm doing this event in New York with this person that's gonna be here. It's 10,000 a person, you know, you have any interest in this thing? And I had not spoken to this guy in over a year. I just decided I'm gonna send him a text message, but I've known him forever. And he says, he's like, wow, that sounds like amazing. Uh, I'd like to go and I'd like to bring my partner. Uh, he's like, is that 20 grand? And I remember reading that text, I'm like, holy shit, I just made $20,000 by With sending a text. a text message. And that's when it dawned on me, like, you know, time flies. We forget how quickly. If you go back to 2012, <laughs> most the people weren't doing marketing like that. They're just talking to each other. It was a communication mechanism. But right at that moment, I was like, oh my God. Like, this is a vehicle, and I started talking That's about that. It's a little that. bit of slow execution, don't you think? We're in 2019, you're just getting to it. Yeah, well, <laughs> but here's the thing. We, we still do, we do text messaging. I collect when I speak, uh, I'll do, you know, we do, we, I do do this. And I've, but nowhere <laughs> near the left, no, but you should insult me as much as you can because it's shaming me will perhaps make me do more uh, I was sure that we stuff. could just turn this into a roast session just between we the could. two. This is what we do. Yeah. Well, let's talk about all the dumb shit that I'm not doing currently that you can help me with. <laughs> we don't have that much time. Yeah, yeah. No, so, so um, is there any more questions that someone has for Amanda? Because I want all of you to at least feel uh, in, equipped to be able to do this, and I'd like you to tell people how to get your course. And I want to preface this because I even said to her, we don't pitch at Genius Network. Uh, 
and, and I don't want everyone to say, hey, now, like this is something where I would like everyone that wants to do this to actually do it. If you listen to the podcast, if you just go to some of the websites that we can send out, you don't need a course in order to start doing this. You can do it. The course will just assist with it. Uh, I don't want anyone to, to get this, though, and not be happy. So if anyone buys uh, this course and it does not fit you or whatever, uh, will you give them their money back? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. Any, anybody, good. not just not, not just Genius Network okay. members. I, I just don't want anyone, I just, like, I'm very sensitive about trying to pitch stuff <laughs> to people that are in a 25 I'm, like, 000. shocked. We didn't yeah. talk about this. So I'm yeah. like, I know, it could have been more strategic and way more intelligent. That, that's a lesson in and of itself is get, you know, kind of figure that out beforehand. Well, and with a, with a Facebook group as well, I'd like, I'd, I, want, I want it to be a community around all of these communication channels, not just like, let me just teach you how to do it. So um, the course comes with a private Facebook group, and that sounds really cheesy, but I've got, you know, Clayton Makepeace, who's the world's highest paid copywriter in there. I've got yeah, Randy. Who introduced you to Clayton? This guy, um, you know, Perry Belcher, who is one of the best copywriters in the world and yeah. one of the most strategic businessmen that I've you know, I've ever known is also in that group. I've got Chris and Randy who own SMS platforms. I've got Jeff Usner who's like the king of push notifications. I've got experts in um, bot stuff. So it's not just like the Facebook group isn't just about um, SMS marketing and sh like me showing examples and stats and stuff like that. I have experts and the top of their game people in this group. So you can ask questions about pretty much anything um, and get a pretty solid answer. Yeah. Uh, in the Facebook group. Which is awesome. So it's worth it. Honestly, if you buy the course for $500 and you can't recoup the $500 in a single text message, then just, just tell me. <laughs> you can just yeah. have your money back. <laughs> what I would like is I want to actually get uh, Genius Network members, not only everyone here, but I want to introduce everyone to doing this and I want to see how other people are using it and I want this to be an ongoing conversation of here's how we're doing it because the more that, so, you know, like, if we can get Howard Getson as an example to start actually yeah. utilizing this, and then he could come up here and teach people marketing, that would be a win. That would be a total win. Yeah, I was on a, I did a webinar um, yesterday for a group of Amazon sellers, and I was like, thought about it. I was like, holy crap, I don't know how to implement SMS to Amazon because you don't reclaim, re, uh, retain the information. Yeah. So we brainstormed for like an hour on how you can implement SMS marketing to Amazon. So it's just like, this is only going to get bigger and better and, you know, more widespread as we go. Not that Jeff Bezos needs any more ways to infiltrate <laughs> people the way they've done, but if they started putting uh, free recorded messages or text here to get this one thing on all of the boxes that they ship out every day, and, and all those boxes actually gave an ability to capture one more uh, mechanism and, and where people could do permission marketing, I mean, it would be a massive game changer. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I got uh, Evan Pagan to start putting... Uh, he used to do interviews with dating experts, which was another idea that I gave him years ago, uh, which he, he'll, he, he tries not to give me credit for. Uh, put free recorded messages on his product packaging for Double Your Dating and then his uh, for uh, WDating.com for David D'Angelo. And then he also had uh, CatchHimAndKeepHim.com with Christian uh, Carter, I think it was, for women. So he had online dating advice for men, online dating advice for, for, for women. Or not online, but dating advice for men, dating advice for added a million dollars a year in revenue uh, using that sticker on the, on the top box. And then, of course, uh, we taught that in Stick Strategy Secrets, and Russell Brunson pretty much, Russell steals everything. We're just going to say so, soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's, he started using that on pretty much everything. But, you, you, you know, you can, uh, Amazon could, anything physical, anything physical is, is, a, is real estate to engage people. So this is this one more channel but it happens to be probably the most important and most highest response channel that currently exists right now other than the ability to go face to face and meet somebody face to face <laughs> but you can't so you know to go back to selling is what you do when you're on the phone or face to face with somebody marketing is what you do you know to get them on the phone or face to face with you and so this is an elf technique i i, I look at everything that is automated, that is robotic, that is highly replicatable, that works 24 hours a day, seven days a week, doesn't, you know, and, and that's, that's what I would put under the category of ELF. So I think this is one of the best and most effective ELF techniques that I have barely even scratched the surface on. And so that's why I wanted you to come here and share this. So any, anything we didn't talk about that we should talk about, any motivational speech at the end you'd like to give here? Famous last words, anything? Famous like, last words, any, any, just any. do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, I think we covered a lot of a lot of the most that I can cover without giving too much away. Um, but let, um, just one more thing to drive it home. 
we I've said this time and time again while while I was up here, but be value first when you're when you're going through this process. Like really, guys, like this is a tool for you to change people's lives and make lot people's lives better with your products and your services and your messages. And that's why we're in this. We want to get our ideas out into the world. So you realize that this is a powerful tool, is a direct tool, and it has impact and it affects people's lives because it's in their hand all the time. So come at this. I, I look at monetization of this second. I look at value first. If you've got a continuity program or anything like that use this to increase your stick um, you know make sure that this is something that's useful to people and not just to make money and you'll end up making more money in the end by going at it from that approach so you know when you're thinking about your SMS program how you're gonna get people into it how you're gonna get them to stay and how you're gonna talk to them value first I'm sure you've heard it a million times before for other communication channels but for SMS more than anything else like you know be careful with it use it the right way and come at it with value Awesome. What is the link we had for the thing on, I can't even remember, on I Love Marketing? I love marketing.com forward slash Amanda, and you'll have access to the podcast. And then I gave um, um, all of the platform recommendations that I made are on that page as well, and then there's a link to the course. Okay, and is that, that's how people get it there? Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah, all right. absolutely. Uh, did you guys find this valuable? Yes. Okay, awesome. Uh, give it up, Amanda Dawson. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, awesome. guys. Thank you so much. Okay, I hope you found that video awesome and useful. So if you want to get a free copy of my book, I want you to click here. And if you want to watch some more videos that will be useful and awesome, click here. Go ahead. You're over here. Do it now. Come on. Thank you. Watch them.